Hello, and welcome to this Beyond Shakespeare exploring session for the Pageant of the Weavers, the second of two Coventry mystery plays, which we will be doing in the version revised by Robert Crow in 1534. Uh, Robert Crow or Crew, spelled C-R-O-O -O in the text. Uh, these plays are first attested as being done in Coventry in the year 1392 or so. Uh, but this was uh, this version revised at the at the Reformation uh, or around then, um, presumably to make it less heretical, uh, and also to add uh, surprisingly some some jokes, which we will which we will come up to. Um, and the, amidst the sacred nature of this play, uh, there are definitely some laughs, and. Uh, to, uh, and to read this text, we've assembled a most excellent team of readers on multiple, multiple continents and time zones, uh, reading Second Prophet, Anna, Gabriel, and the Third Doctor is... Hi, Lisa Hill Corley from Fairfax, Virginia. Marvelous. And reading, the, and reading Mary, as well as the Second Angel and the Second Doctor is... Hi, Lindsay Beecham here. I'm living in Norfolk at the moment, but I was born in Canada, brought up in the US, and naturalized in the UK. Lindsay is from everywhere, basically. Uh, and uh, as first prophet, first angel, Clark, and first doctor, basically first in all things, is... Sorry, I'm just trying out some... Um... Hi, I'm Eric, and we can cut that out, I hope. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Eric. Uh, that's it. Hello, he's Eric. And uh, and in the role of Jesus himself, as well as the prophet Simeon, we have... Hi, I'm Greg, and usually found somewhere near Coventry. Marvelous. So we've got that authenticity there, and I am your guest host, Liza Graham, and I will also be reading the part of Joseph. Uh, extremely holy looking forward to it uh so in your own time uh if you uh if we open on some prophets uh who have seen a strange star and who are talking about it uh that and uh in in your own time first prophet if you would take it away Ye great astronomers, now to now wake with your famous fathers of philosophy, and into the Orient respect ye take, where news and strangeness become of late, affirming the saying of old prophecy that a star should appear upon the hill of wars among us here. Brethren all, then be of good cheer, for those tidings maketh my heart full light. We have desired many a year of that star to have a sight, and specially of that king of might whose coming we might have plain warning by this same star after prophets discerning yet further i pray you for my learning let us have some communication of this star by prognostifying how it appeared and under what fashion sir after a strange deformation as by authorized rehearse i can for this strange, strange for this same star by interpretation signifies the, the nativity of a man as the prophet Balaam in his text affirmeth well, saying, Orietur stella ex Jacobo et surg ex surgit homo de Israel. He said of Jacob, a star should spring, which signifieth only the same king that among us, amongst us now is come. And as touching the letter following, et ipse dominabur, do, dominabitur omni generatione. Sir, here may be moved a question of this noble prince of so high degree, the which of all men shall have dominion under what manner born he should be. As ye shall hear right wonderful by divine power of a virgin pure, affirming the prophecy against all nature. Where find you that in Holy Scripture before prognostified this to be done? Ye say the prophet writeth full sure, ecce virgo concipiat uh, pariat filium. Balaam saying of the heavenly wisdom, a man should spring here in Israel. The said, he say, to answering to that question, et vocabulator, et vocabulator uh, nomen is Emmanuel. Yet, I, yet have I great marvel how that men should tell of such 
strangeness before it befell, and man being here but a mortal creature. Yes. Uh, by divine power, I make you sure the spirit of prophecy to them was sent. So to subscribe in whole scripture, and yet himself was, was not what it meant. Now, Lord be, Lord be unto him that such knowledge sent unto us wretches of poor simplicity, where he is Lord and God omnipotent, in this his will to make us privy. Did not that ma prophet man Malachi recite unto us on this same wise that the son of life shall spring and arise, which caused Esau to cast up his eyes toward heaven with all his inward sight, saying, Good Lord, affirming thy promise, send down to us this only son of might, us to restore unto a right out of desert from the hard stone, recomforting thy daughter swelling in Sion. Also, Jeremo, that whole month, uh, yeah, said in heaven, God should seed a grain of David that now is come, which ever in graces shall spring and spread, and keep Judah out of dread, and also Israel in sureness, and he shall make judgments of right wiseness. I wonder to hear you this express by actors high this worthy mystery, especially of this virtue, right wiseness, where it should be used and in what part? Upon the earth, both with high and low degree, and right wiseness men shall him call when he shall come to sit in the sea of King David, that most royal soul. And there shall he before all the priests all of Judah and Levi by his power devise with new incense to do sacrifice to God above for the great offense of the people and for ignorance of their offering to make recompense for the lineage of Adam's progeny. This shall this child buy them free from all the offenses that they have done by cruel death and bitter passion. Good sir, yet under protestation of our faith thereby for to increase, of this star let us have relation how it appeared and under what fashion, if it would please you for to express. With diverse streams of great brightness, a child therein of flagrant sweetness, which upon his back cross did bear, and of an eagle it bare the likeness, beating his wings into the air. A noise therein of language fair that was heard throughout the country saying natus est nobis hodi rex judeorum etc of a farther declaration i would you pray what tribes they were and in what part they were date and what manner of way they may have made probate of this prophecy and that i shall show you right evidently the great lords of the land of chavi um, founded 12 masters of astronomy for to see this star appear. And when these masters were elect on the hill of wars, their watch they kept. And they altogether never slept above nine year. And did they so long watch that hill? Yea, truly, till that it was, till that it was this king's will that th this said prophecy for to fulfill. That strange star to send them till whereof they had intelligence, that after the darkness of the night, in the day it shone so bright, that when the sun and the star in the year together were, betwixt them there was little or no, non-indifference. And so this star was a servitor unto, the, uh, unto, unto three kings of plain conductor, unto the mansion of a virgin pure. But are you sure for what intent? Forsooth to Bedlam straight they went, where, whereas they offered to this child reverend, with great homage a famous present. The first was gold, as most mighty king. The second was myrrh, as priest of priests being. The third was incense, in tokening of burying. Yet would I know the cause specially, what moved these kings to come so hastily, and whether they came open or privy? The star brought them through every country, and ever as they came openly, they did inquire of those news. Ever they asked, where is he that he that is born for it to be the king of Jews? Therefore, let us with all diligence unto that child give honor and reverence, and that we may come unto his presence to have fruition of his high deity. And brother, I thank you of your patience, for now at this time depart will we. Now, brother, for your sweet sentence, at all times welcome to me. Lo, friends, there you may see how God and man worketh always. Now all we that his servants be hath great cause in him to joy, which sendeth us knowledge the truth to say, and he so miraculously working therewith that all secrets we write they were pit wherefore much cause have we to make mirth when we remember the glorious birth of this virgin son he the second person in the trinity equal with his father in deity and under the curtain of our humanity 
for us would man become. Wherefore, here I exhort you all, that in this place here assembled be, unto this child for mercy call, which shall redeem us upon a tree, and that glorious bliss that we may see, which he hath ordained for all men in this celestial place to be, in secula secutorium. Amen. The celestial sovereign, our high Lord, uh, the celestial sovereign, our high God eternal, which of this marvelous world is the foundation, and create the high heavens, his own sea imperial, with sun, moon, and stars, earth, sky, and water, and for all the sustenance of our human nature, with fish, fowl, beast, and every other thing, under us to have the natural course and being. Yet our former parents, at the beginning, through disobedience, had a grievous fall from the high pales and bliss everlasting, down into this veil of miserable mind for Mundal, sorry, for which the for the which transgression we uh, for the which transgression all we are now mortal that before was infinite for ever to remain, and now shall take end by death and cruel pain which grievous sorrow oft doth me constrain inwardly to sigh and bitter tears to weep so that i remember the great comfort again of ancient prophets with their sentence sweet whose fructus science of profound learning deep in their altars appeareth to us right manifestly of is isaiah sebalam balam and malachi Lords of lords in heart, beseech I thee of this infinite work to send me the true light, truly to expound this said whole prophecy, and also of that king that I may have a sight, and that we may walk in his ways upright, the which by redemption shall us all release, at whose coming the true unction of Judah shall cease. Now, Lord, fulfill that time of peace, for age draweth me fast upon. Fain would I see that holy of holiness all this mortal life from me were gone. Now, Lord, as thou art the three in one, grant me grace, if that thy will be, in mine own age that sight for to see. Then at thy will, Lord, fain would I be, if thou such grace wouldest me send, to love thee, Lord, with all humility, and so of my life then to make an end. Yet, Lord, thy grace to me now extend. Suffer me rather yet to live in pain than to die, or that I am solemn sight have seen. O oh, suffering Simon, with all solemnity that of our glorious temple hath a governance, with all due reverence, here I beseech thee, I be, thy old friend in God, to have in remembrance the which hath tarried by a long continuance for the coming of the right magi, which hath been promised to unto us by prophecy. O Lord, though thou I'd be nothing worthy to see the fashion of thy most precious picture, yet, Lord, accept of me of thy great mercy and thy poor servant and faithful preacher. To see thee, Lord, if, if that I might be sure, no longer on the ground I would require in this mortal life to continue here. Faithful friend and lover dear, to you this text oft have I told, that the light of Levia monas here in Israel should be bought and sold, as ancient prophets hereof have told, that in this land here he should make sureness, and he to be called the king of peace, as Isaiah himself herein to witness, in Fasai Populorum this did he say, Convenerit sanctus sanctorum sesebit unctio vestra, and so when our right blood shall cease, much virtue and grace then shall increase, with high judgments of right, right wiseness amongst us even here in Israel. If that I might abide that day, that holy of holies were to see, which that I have desired always in this world well were me. Now, Lord, and if thy will it be, grant me my hope long looked for, then joy nor wealth I keep I no more. Now, Anne, sister and dear friend, let us both with a whole intent in this true faith our lives ye end, lording that Lord which is omnipotent, wherefore I think it full expedient in continual prayer for to endure, to know thereby his gracious pleasure.
O Suffren Simon, thy famous counsel inwardly gladdeth me in my heart. Nothing contented my mind so well. Wherefore at this time will we depart? Now, Anne, see that ye will hence need unto the temple with all speed our lords for to will for to abide. That Lord of lords be thy guide and send thee that which thou lovest most. Both heel and boat for thee provide wherever thou go in any cost. Friends, now it is time to pray before that I my rest do take. My custom hath it been alway, as long as ever I am awake, intercession unto that Lord to make of him to obtain all my request, and then full peaceable to take my rest. Now, Lord, that madest all things of naught, both heaven and hell and every creature, as thou knowest mine inward thoughts, recomfort me when it is thy pleasure. For I do covet no more treasure than the time of thy nativity, with my mortal years that I might see. But as thou wilt, Lord, all thing must be, and reason it is that it be so. My will thereto shall ever agree. My whole desire now dost thou know, or that I unto sleep to go. I commit my works with all the circumstance, wholly unto thy laws and ordinance. Simon, of thy, Simeon, of thy rest awake, oh. our Lord in heaven, he sendeth thee greeting. Of my message with thee for to make with thee his friend a solemn meeting. His blessed body unto thy keeping within short time shall be brought, and here in thy temple thou shalt be sought. Lord, whence came this solemn noise that awoke me here so suddenly? My spirits there my spirits therewith did so rejoice that no longer sleep could I. Methought he said right perfectly that solemn sufferant that I should see and have him here in my custody. Simeon, that Lord in Trinity, whom thou hast desired to see alway, at thy temple offered shall be, unto thy hand this same day. Therefore speed in all that thou may, that the temple in order be, this prince to receive with all humility. Now, Lord of Lords, thanks be to thee, these glorious tidings that here be told in my heart so gladdeth me that I am lighter a thousandfold than ever I was before. Wherefore will I with all my might to see my temple so preciously piped in gorgeous array that it be dight this prince for to honour. There Simeon goeth to his clerks and saith. Now, friends, all be of good cheer and to our temple draw we near some such solemn news now I hear, that all my spirit doth glad. That babe is born of dignity, that we so long have desired to see, our Lord and King most mighty, that all this world made. Now blessed mote that Lord be, that day and hour that we shall see his glorious body in divinity, in trinity, eh, rhymes. Um, that flower that never shall fade. No longer, sirs, let us abide, but to the temple with all speed to receive the saviour of this world wide and him to serve with low and dread. Now, sirs, look that ye take good heed to wait and serve with all diligence, his grace to honour with humble reverence. Sir, a prince of such magnificence, sir, I was never one there too. Sir, ye therein hath more intelligence. Instruct me, sir, how that I should do. Lest that I do offend, for rather than I would a him grieve, that Lord on whom I do believe. Yet I had labor myself from move unto the world's end. Sith that for ye sith that ye for knowledge doth make suit, your wits the better do I repute. With humble hearts and meek, one of us must hold the light and the other the sacrifice. And I, on knees as it is right, the office to exercise unto that babe so sweet. Then haste we this altar to array, and clothes of honour thereon to lay, and the ground straw we with flowers gay, that of odour sweetly smells. And when he approaches near this place, sing then with me that conning has, and the other the main space, for joy ring ye the bells. And they sing. Uh, uh, Eric, Clark, if you would like to read the lyrics of the song. 
Rejoice, rejoice, all that here be. The angel these tidings, tidings has, hath brought. That Simeon before he died shall see the Lord which all hath wrought. Wherefore now let, uh, let us all prepare our temple that in order be. For he that hath put our way our care. The second person in Trinity. Okay, and there we will pause for some discussion. Normally I ring a bell. I left the bell upstairs. That's the kind of day it is. Um, <laughs> this... I'm planning relatively few discussion pauses in this text because it is—it's quite long, and we need to, um, and and also it has quite a nice flow to it. So I don't want to necessarily interrupt the flow. So well done, everyone. This text is not easy, and you're all managing it really well. Uh, Lisa and Eric, what do you what did you make of that first scene with the prophets? It's funny, the second prophet spent most of the time asking, what does this mean? What does this mean? And then the second prophet was the one to wrap everything up for the audience, which was interesting. So maybe they were, you know, maybe it was the audience stand in, I guess, to, for the meaning of all the different gifts and uh, what does this star mean, right? Because it's like the first, and I love how the first prophet, there's always that guy that's going to pull out the Latin, right? <laughs> I want to say you're like, we get it. But, <laughs> But um, I, I, I felt like that was the second prophet sort of uh, role there in this in this first scene. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. The the second prophet is the question asking character, and right. and prophet one is the exposition. Um, and all the Latin sort of going. Yes, I Latin. read this in this reference. So look, That's I have amazing. a book. Look, yes, I have a book. I can read the things look from. Look at you. Yeah, it, it, it it's, it's like he read a book or two, and he's like. Right. Um, First prophet is definitely that guy in the pub. Right, he's that guy, exactly. And then, and then I became Linus in the Charlie Brown Christmas special right there at the end, you know, for what's it, you know, what, here is the true meaning of what we just, you know, it was a big wrap up of it. And no one even pulled away the football. No. <laughs> but I, I do like that little speech for the, the second prophet there that, and it's yeah. nice also for that actor to get, to get something like that to to deliver rather than just the questions yeah it makes it less of a subordinate role and a bit more equal i thought it's like let me turn to you and without all that latin explain what just happened yeah and then yeah exactly you, you phrase it into ways that the audience can understand which yeah. is which is nice um so yeah, it's a nice speech there. yeah so greg then we get simeon who seems tremendously old and and doesn't necess and doesn't want to die until he has seen the coming of of the Messiah, or in as in this text rather wonderfully spells it messy. Uh, <laughs> there can only be one, and it's totally reasonable to want to not die until you've seen him. Twenty first century footballer makes appearance in Coventry. Yes. Um, See, that's a prophecy. Yeah, that, that's a very good prophecy. Um, once I got my teeth in, it was fine. It was just like, like most of these things. Once you hit the rhythm, it's yeah. I um I liked his speech to Anna. I thought that was the was it the first one. I thought that was a rather lovely little, little rather lovely little one that he got. Um, I've lost it now. Yes, I I do like it that they're um. I'm not sure, again, I, I'm not biblically knowledgeable enough to know what the actual relationship between them is, if they're married, if they are brother and sister, or if they're right. both, if they're it's both just... just... Different things. I, think yeah. they're mar I think they are married off the top of okay. my head. I, I was trying to think of it. I also was trying to work out who half the prophets were, because it was like, I got Malachi, but who's Sebalam, Balam was? It sounded like some sort of dodgy, Dr. Faustus invocation to me, but um, well, no <laughs> demons actually showed up, so I think we're all right. <laughs> is an Isaiah being spelt the way I think that's Isaiah? I'm assuming it was Isaiah, but yeah, yeah, Isaiah it, e. yeah, I had yeah, no idea what that was. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's it's hard to parse with with that spelling, and it's also difficult to ascertain what the author intended the rhyme to be, because it tends to, tends to rhyme with words that end in e. So do you say Isaiah? I, um... I also love the fact he quotes Latin and he's in first century AD Israel, but you know. The... 
<laughs> yes, I, I'm guessing your your average weaver in in Coventry didn't have great New Testament Greek. Wait, no, uh, no. Maybe their knowledge of Aramaic was a little bit patchy. <laughs> yeah, but didn't they have to deal with the Romans, like uh, historically, sort of to sort of, you know, they were under oppression. If, yeah, they if were. I'm not mistaken. Joking apart, but it just it's the fancy quotes. It's just like. Come on. Yeah. You're going to quote it, quote it properly. But no, I, I like him. I think it's, it's an interesting... It's an interesting part. Of course, he's the great... He is the great waiter. Um, it's just, yeah. Um, I'll just get on with it, is my feeling at the moment. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, that's probably a good sentiment for Simeon. And he... Uh, he makes that prayer, the prayer is answered, we have angels, we have the play's first direction for a song. Um, and then we shift the scene um, to the angel Gabriel speaking to Mary. Now, uh, this, is, uh, this is not his enunciation of the birth of Jesus, Jesus is already born. This play is the second in a sequence uh, which begins with the pageant of the Shearmen and Tailors, another very lovely text which we have done, available on our YouTube channel. Links in the show notes. Um, and uh, so now Jesus being, uh, uh, we think, a slightly older child, uh, and, and Gabriel has some advice for Mary. So Gabriel, in your own time, Hail Mary, meek and mild, the virtue in thee shall never fade. Hail maiden and that child that all this world made. Thy celestial father, which is omnipotent of his embassy, hither hath, sent, hath, hither hath me sent unto thee, lady and virgin reverent, with thy son, our heaven king, unto the temple that thou shouldst go, and two white turtles with thee also, and present the child with them too, all three of them in offering. Speed you forth, that ye were gone, but leave not ye with Joseph at home, for needly lady, he must be one in the sacrifice doing. With heart and will it shall be done, in pleasing of that father of might. Thither will I both hastily and soon, and take with me my child so bright. Then to Joseph go ye full right, and make him preve of this case. Bid him haste that he were dight, to guide you thither unto that place. Now rest well, Mary, with much solace, for I must hither as I came from. He that is and ever was, be thy guide wherever thou go, and send us all of his grace. I pray here kneeling, it may be so. Now come hither to me, my darling dear, my mirth, my joy, and all my cheer, sweeter than ever was blossom on briar. Thy sweet mouth now will I kiss. Now, Lord of Lords, be our guide, wherever we walk in countries wide. And these two turtles for us provide of them that we do not miss. Rest well, Joseph, my spouse so free. Now welcome, Mary. Dame, what say ye? Sweet news, husband, I bring to thee. The angel of God with me hath thee to give us both warning that you and I, with a whole intent, after the law that here is meant, should in the temple our child present in Jerusalem, there to make offering. Now, Mary, that will I never deny, but after my power for to apply, and that you know, dame, as well as I, you never call, but I am ready. Now, husband, ye speak full gentle. Therefore look, Joseph, and ye could spy two turtle doves, how that we might come nigh. For needly turtles offer must we, that offering falleth for our degree. Nay, nay, Mary, that will not be. Mine age is such I may not well see. There shall no doves be sought for me, also God me save. Sweet Joseph, Fulfill ye our Lord's hests. Why, and wouldst thou have me to hunt birds' nests? I pray thee heartily, dame, leave these jests and talk of that will be. 
For Dane, well, I never waste my wits to wait or pry where the woodcock sits, nor to jubber it among the merle pits, uh, for that was never my guise. Now I am old and may not well go. A small twinge would me overthrow, and I, and I were once lied alow, full ill then should I rise. Yea, hardily, Joseph, do not dread. Our Lord will quite right well your meed, and at all times be your speed, and further you in your voyage. Hey, dame, hey, God help us all. Methink your may more were small on me, so homely ever to call. You mind nothing mine age. But the weakest goeth ever to the wall, therefore go thyself, dame, for me thou shall, yea, or else get thee a new page. Husband, these be no women's deeds. Therefore, Joseph, you must forth needs, for surely there is no remedy. No remedy, then, but, but I must go? Now by my troth I may tell you these tidings are but cold. Then needs must that needs shall, and... Now he that may, worst of all, the candle is like to hold. Now, gentle Joseph, when will you go to make an end of this our journey? That shall be, or I have any lust thereto, and that dare I boldly say. How say ye, all this company, that be wedded as well as I? I ween that ye suffer much woe. For he that weddeth a young thing must fulfill all her bidding. Or else he may his hands wring, or water his eyes when he would sing, and that all you do know. Why say ye so, sir? Ye be to blame. Dame, all this company will say the same. Is it not so? Speak, men, for shame. <laughs> Tell you the truth as you well can. For they that will not their wives please, oft times shall suffer much disease. Therefore I hold him well at ease that hath to do with none. Leave ye of these gods for my love, and go for these fowls, sir, I you pray. The Father of heaven that is above will speak you well in your journey. No remedy, but I must forth need. Now our Lord grant me well for to speed. Lo, fair words full oft doth lead men clean again their mind. Now, Lord God, thou send me fair weather, and that I may find these fowls together, white or black, I care not whither, so that I may then find. Full well shall you speed hardily, if that ye go about it willingly. Then I will go by and by, though it be not full hastily, with all my heart I will go spy. If any be in my way, I will them find, and I may, or that I make an end. Now that Lord, that best may, he be your speed in your journey, and good tithings of you me send. Yea, that he that hath such one on him to crave, he shall be sure, as God me save, even the worse end of the staff to have, oh, at the latter end. I wander about, myself alone. Uh, turtles nor doves can I none see. Uh, now, King of Heaven, thou amend my moan, for I trow I seek not where they be. Oof, my might, my strength is, is worn from me. For age I am waxen almost blind. These fowls, they are full far from me, and weary evil for me to find. I look fast, and ne'er the near, <laughs> My wind for faint is almost gone. Lord Benedicite, what make I here among these hedges myself alone? For weary I may no longer stand. These, oh, these busks, they tear me on every side. Here will I sit upon this land, our Lord's will for to abide. Arise up, Joseph, and take no thought for these two fowls that thou hast sought. Even to thy hand I have them brought, and therefore be of good cheer. Take them here, both two, and again to marry thy wife thou go, to all, in all the haste that it be due, that thou tarry no longer here. Oh, Lord be unto that Lord so excellent, for those two fowls that I have sought. Fulfilled now is mine intent, my heart is even as it ought. All care from me is past. Now that marry my wife these birds had, 
for to make her heart as glad, to her will I in haste. Now rest well, Mary, mine own darling. Lo, dame, I have done thy bidding, and brought these doves for our offering. Here be they both alive. Woman, have them in thy hand. I am full glad I have them found. Am I not a good husband? Yea, dame, so won't I thrive. Now the Father of heaven that is above, he quit you, Joseph, for this deed. And further, I pray you for my love, unto the temple let us make speed. Eh, blow a wild dame, I thee pray, uh, for soft and easily men go far. I have labored all this day, yet am I very little than are. I trow that I shall never be where so full of fair words these women be, that men there too must needs agree. And therefore, dame, also mote I see, after my labor fain would I rest. Therefore, go thyself, thou shalt for me, or tarry at home whither thou thinkst best. Nay, sweet husband, ye do well know, to go alone is not for me. Wherefore, good sir, I pray you so, that I may have your company. Lo, friends, here you may know, the manner of my wife is so, that with her needs must I go, whether I will or nill. How is that not this a cumbrous life? Lo, sirs, what it is to have a wife. Yet had I leave her, nor to live in strife, apply even to her will. For sith that here is there no remedy, take up your child, I say, Mary, and walk we together fair and easily, and so to stint all strive. And I will truss up this gear, for I see well I must it bear. At Jerusalem I would ye all were, also mote I thrive. There shall we be when God will. For at his pleasure, all things must be. Dame, and that is both reason and skill. Set forward then, and let me see. They journey, enter the angel to Simeon. Awake, Simeon, and dread thee not, all the, in all the haste that ever may be, and receive that Lord that all hath wrought with him his mother Mary. Make speed, Simeon, that thou art dead, to receive that child with all thy might. Now shalt thou see the blessed Blessed this sight that ever thou didst see. Lord of lords, this solemn noise from the maker of heaven and hell, my heart therewith so did rejoice that the mirth thereof can no tongue tell, nor hand with pen subscribe. I thank that Lord and King of might, though all my lust through age be worn, that I shall see this glorious sight. Blessed be the hour that thou wast born this day that ever i do abide now to receive this king of peace that out of danger shall us release our high merit shall be increase in joy abundantly for here keep i no more bliss but that he mark me for one of his and then when his sweet will is am i even ready to die now, clerks, come forth and do your office, and this altar hastily that ye array, for here shall be the solemnest sacrifice that ever was seen in Judah. Make sure, friends, and all that ye may, that order be had in every place. Now that Lord of Lords that best may, to do our duties he grant us grace, and for to please him to his pay, say all you Deo gracias. Lo, master, both man and place be all ready at your bidding. Then, sirs, come forth apace, and merrily the bells ring. And, sister, go ye with me, for to receive the Prince of Honour, and him to welcome reverently, as of this world, Lord and Governor. Now, Father Simeon, I am obedient, your grace pleasure for to obey, to serve that Lord which is omnipotent. Let us go meet him on the way. I forgot to unmute. Master, now are the bells rung, and every every ready yeah, and ready at hand is everything. Then let me see with heart and tongue how merrily that he can sing. And they sing. Here they come down with procession to meet them. Hail sufferant Simeon so good, my seemly son, here I bring to thee, to offer him up in flesh and blood, as by the law he ought to be. Now, whole Mary and Joseph also, ye be right welcome unto this place, for of God are ye blessed both two that have you grounded in such grace. 
and ye, Joseph, of so great age that such a babe forth can bring, in whom all our redemption doth hinge, and and of this world is Lord and King that this was a gracious marriage. Now, gentle bishop, I thee pray, even the very truth thou wouldst me say, is not not this a pretty boy, as ever thou hast known? Now by him that made both heaven and hell, this little mite I love as well as though he were mine own. Receive him, Simeon, with good cheer. The law will, it shall so be. For which cause I bring him here? Here, in thy hands, take him thee. Now welcome, Lord of honour. Now welcome, Prince, unto this place. Welcome, our sufferant saviour. Welcome, the ground of our grace. Welcome our joy, welcome our mirth, welcome our gracious governor, welcome to us that heavenly flower. Now blessed be the day and hour of thy glorious birth. Now welcome king of kings all, now welcome maker of all mankind. Welcome to us both great and small, good Lord thy servants now have in mind that long hath lived here in cleanness pure without offense, with great desires for to be hence. But now the sight of thy presence hath amended all our cheer. Now welcome, Lord, unto, unto all us, thy known true servants, as reason is. Welcome, our Lord, our God and King of bliss, our Lord, long looked for. All the prophets that of thee spake said thou shouldst for our sake, flesh and blood of a maiden take our joys to restore. On with, on with me, my friends dear, with this child that we have here, of this world the lantern clear, of whom, of whom all light shall spring. With whole hearts now let us pray, that hour and time now bless we may, that ever we abode the day of this child's coming. And they sing. Uh, Lindsay, if you would read the song, please. Behold, <clears throat> excuse me, behold, now it is come to pass that many years before was told how that Christ, our right Messiah, by Judas should be bought and sold. For our offence he man became, his father's wrath to pacify, and after meekly as a lamb upon the cross, there did he die. Lord, as thou hast brought us all and suffered at Mount Calvary, Recomfort us, both great and small, that in thy truth we live and die. Here Simeon goeth to the altar with the child in his arms, and saith, Now art thou come, Lord, to my hand, though that I unworthy were, yet, Lord, forgive thy poor servant. And here there is there is some text missing and when we take it up again uh, it is Mary who speaks while the weather is so fair and I will come after as I may for now at home I would we were to go before now I will essay though my feetmanship be not so n not full gay I pray God speed us in our journey for I shall be weary ere that I come there Mary and Joseph departs out of the upper part of the pageant. Lo, friends, how God for us hath wrought, and showed himself here at this tide. Blessed most be in word and thought, mindful maker of this world wide. I was lame of foot and hand, and now I am whole, as ye may see. I thank that Lord of his sand, and ever his servant will I be. That Lord so much of might, now Lord of lords that have no peer, which at this time was offered here, send you all the fruition clear of his heavenly mansions so bright. And of our miss he amend us, and from our foes defend us, and his high throne he send us, in secular seculorum, amen. Excellent. Here goeth Simeon and his clerks out of the temple, and here we will take a short pause for discussion. Um, Yes. How how do we, how do we uh, Greg as Simeon? How do you like that scene? Your your prayers are fulfilled at last, and Anna's too. Um, it seemed a bit of an anticlimax to me. <laughs> I really hope Simeon didn't say that. 
Sorry, guys. Bye. Is this, is this it then? Is this Jesus? Yeah. I mean, really, I was expecting more. <laughs> yeah. He's like a baby. What I'm, do I mean? I've given up my Sunday for this. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Cranky old bugger, aren't you? <laughs> I am. You're right. Um, but he, he genuinely, he, to be honest, he does. He does. He, you know, you do hear the full sort of joy in his voice, um, but he just takes so long to bloody say it. <laughs> I was glad to the lacuna because I thought if that speech had gone any more than three lines, I think I'd have been going bonkers by the end of it. <laughs> so it was just another praise by the sounds of things. <laughs> It's it's true, and and Simeon, you know, the person you cast as Simeon is going to be your actor with a good voice who who can make text sing, you know, not a lot of action. It's not necessarily an action role, Simeon, um, and and so yeah, a lot of what he says is how he thinks or feels or prays. Um, but you know, the writing isn't bad, and I really, you know, I could quite see this scene. Uh, Lisa, I don't know if you get a visual sense of how you might stage this scene with, is Jesus a babe in arms? Is he a young child? What do you... Yeah, or or I have seen pageants where it's, and maybe it's because they just don't want to fool with like a live baby or a doll or something, where it's just almost like a, a, a light and like a great mystery, like you could also Ooh. do that, um, which might be easier <laughs> than a live child, but um, because it's this then the person that explained that to me is because then it's all which in in each individual person's mind or faith or whatever what you what you think the child is you know so that that always thought would be interesting if you if i ever staged a pageant like something like that would be kind of interesting yeah i i do like that i like you know what we do have in the text is jesus being passed from mary's arms to simeon's and then possibly yeah, so that, that to Anna's. Uh, but, you know, if you had your swaddled bundle with a light shining out of it, right. sort of, you know, illuminating whoever was holding it, that would be a, a nice... Oh, that thing. would be cut, yeah. How, however you could make that work. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I do love that speech, Greg, that little speech that Simeon has when Jesus gets handed to him at last, and he's holding this kid, the welcome, welcome speech is just lovely. It is. It's almost like a little song. Yeah, yeah. It could, you know, it could be, if you stage that, you could, you know, have some original music. That would be nice. Yeah. And and I do like, I, I kind of like the idea that Simeon then hands the child on to Anna. Maybe Anna even hands it to the Clark. Maybe the Clark gets to hold Jesus. Everybody gets to love him. Yeah. Um, I, I like the bit when Joseph trying to catch the turtle ducks and it's like, yeah, just no, this old guy is not going to be able to, so we have to help him, you know? <laughs> and uh, the angels are basically like, wait, basically the alarm clocks of the universe, of, as far as I can tell. Sort of going, wake up! I've got something for you to do now. <laughs> yes, I guess they're the directors of this play saying what needs to happen next. <laughs> Um, and and Lindsay, how did you how did you find Mary in the preceding scene? Well, I, I love the relationship that we have between Mary and Joseph. Um, you know, I I I sort of you know, I mean, Mary is probably you know endlessly repeating to him, you know, this is the will of the Lord. We need to do this with increasingly gritted teeth. Like I have told you this. I have asked you to take the rubbish out at least 10 times you know the bin men are coming tomorrow morning at seven and you still haven't done it <laughs> i think there's this sort of lovely very very lifelike husband and wife relationship and and you know the husband is like oh really really i kind of like the feisty joseph <laughs> <laughs> yeah joseph's He's really how you think lovely. of him right <laughs> yeah really really well drawn and so i think i think um there's there's a lot of interesting and fun stuff to play in that relationship i think i, th I think there is and i i do like the way the author has has written joseph he, one gets the feeling that that the the writer knew who he was writing for yeah, um, yeah. and uh, and it does end up being being quite a nice relationship uh as you say 
um, Mary with the perennial cheerfulness and consciousness of this miracle. And for Joseph, like the miracle's getting a bit old now. <laughs> now he has to be kind of talked into the whole plan. Usually like, that's not how you learn it in Sunday school or whatever, right? It's yeah. like, how he's like a human being and he's like, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. It's nice because Joseph is so often in, in all manifestations of culture, very absent, very, yeah. you know, bland. I mean, there's some, there's some really interesting Italian paintings which feature Joseph as this sort of absolutely delighted father figure with the baby Jesus, but almost a, as the age of a grandfather. And you see this kind of incredible joy of this older man who's become a father, you know. And those are so interesting and they're very rare, I think. And this is this is another thing that I feel is quite is quite rare in culture is this you know, quite well developed and quite amusing and engaging character of Joseph. Yeah. I I do like it, and it does seem a way to introduce some lightness into this play. Uh, last play, the Pageant of the Shearmen and Taylors, uh, available on our YouTube channel. We had uh, we had Herod and the Massacre of the Holy Innocents, which made for you know it was very well written. And on the one hand, Herod was funny. But on the other hand, like Massacre of the Innocents. Um, and here, I think the humor is much gentler. Um, yeah, except for the bit where, you know, he's, uh, Joseph is like, oh, yeah, everyone married is going to know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about because all women are like this. They just, they just won't leave you alone. You have to take the trash out. <laughs> and it's like, so cool. And it's and, like, I do like the bit where he calls out to the audience and presumably no one answers. He's like, tell her, tell her, no, please. <laughs> uh, that's quite lovely. So we segue on to another, another scene uh, between Joseph and Mary. There's a bit of a, bit of a scene change uh, when we, we, we present Christ in the temple and uh, we, no, wait, we already presented Christ in the temple to Simeon, and now we're going back to the temple uh, so that uh, Jesus, who's now a little older and can talk, uh, can, can uh, have some disputes with the, with the holy doctors there. Um, not time lords, just doctors. <laughs> doctors of divinity. Um, okay, so uh, scene two, here we go. Now, Mary, my wife here present, unto God much bonded dame are we, that so goodly a child here hath us sent. In this world, a fairer there cannot be. I thank that Lord Omnipotent, for it doth me good him for to see. Wherefore, Joseph, I would he went unto Jerusalem with you and me, for now he is twelve year of age, full well reckoned it may be, of limbs he waxeth fair and large, and much he desireth company. Now, dame, he is a pretty page, and, as you say, full well come on. I know none such one of his age. I pray God make him a right good man. Now, Jesus, my son, with you what cheer, what mirth make you, child, this day? Thou art he that I love most dear, my joy, my mirth, and all my play. I thank you, mother, that in all that I may, and that your hand I am here, to do you service both night and day, and ready always to make you cheer. Now God's blessing have you and mine. Lo, friends, here doth appear, it is early sharp that will be thorn. How glad is he his mother to please, and ever he hath been since he was born. Though that my youth from me be worn, yet in his deeds I have much joy, for in faith he will prove even a pretty boy. Come, my son, well mote thou thee, thou shalt to Jerusalem with thy mother and me. Goodly sight, son, for to see upon this our festival day. Now truly, Joseph, as ye say, and merely for to pass forth the way, some virtuous company I would we had. Yea, dame, God shall be our guide. Dame, I keep no more but even this lad, for you nor I cannot be sad that day that we him see. Mary, you know that I am old, and in company cannot be so bold as I was wont to be. Therefore, Mary, lead ye the way, and easily let us together go. 
Though it be far forth on the day, yet all be our friends, I dare well say, and never a one our foe. Now God hold that which best may, and gentle Joseph let us go. By the hand the child will I lead, I trust the better for to speed. And you, Joseph, also. Yea, dame, let him go before ye and me, and be nothing afraid. For the best footman of us three, in good faith, dame, that is he, if he were well assayed. I am for ready with you to go at your bidding in weal and woe, and to do you service both to, in heart with all meekness, come on, my mother, and dread ye naught, and on your journey as you ought, the Father of heaven that all have wrought, he keep you from distress. Now this is wittily said, and well. Now, Lord, when I to mind do call, in youth, when, when I was very small, many winters are gone. Lord God, benedicite, young children now more wiser be, nor was then an old man. Now, welcome be our Lord's sand. Therefore, come on, gentle husband. The city is even at our hand. Good company there may we find. Hey, hey, dame, in faith I can no more. My legs been weary, my feet be sore. That man that cannot go before needs must come behind. They all go up to the altar and Jesus before. They sing an anthem. Now, Mary, my wife, come hither to me. Now, Mary, hark what I shall say. All thing is done as it should be, and service sung full solemnly for this our festival day. Now, husband, then let us three make thee haste that may be, home to go with company to bring us on the way. There they go down into the fore pageant, and Jesus stealeth away. Mary, my spirits be ravished clean and clearly cast out of all woe with these solemn sights that we have seen in yonder temple that we came fro. Now, certain Joseph, you would not ween what mirth I make without woe, that my child with us hath been and those solemn sights seen also. Then homeward, Mary, let us go, while that we have the light of day, for you have ever loved company, for it doth shorten well your way. Yet in good hour we may both say, for other did we never find. Alas, Joseph, and well away, now have we left our child behind. What, Mary, I say amend thy cheer. Perdee, dame, he doth but as other done. Children together will draw near, he will, I warrant, overtake us soon. Overtake us soon, quoth her. Nay, certes, nay. What need you me such tales to tell? He has gone some other way, or certain, Joseph, he is not well. Dame, he is not far away. From us no man will him while. It helpeth not, Joseph, such words to say. My child is gone, alas, the while. We shall have him, dame, or it be long. If we search well yonder city, some children there he is among, or else surely homeward is he. Of sorrow now shall be my song, my child again till I may see. Dame, of his welfare I would be glad, and of the other I would be woe. Therefore, Mary, no more be sad, but again to the city let us go. Make haste, Joseph, that we were there, for had I never more lust thereto. Back again let us repair, for that is best for us to do. Here Mary and Joseph goeth down into the temple ward. Enter three doctors. Now, lordings, listen to me a while, which hath the laws under hand, and that no man fall in such peril against any article for to stand. For the common statute of this land, and will that all such persons shall be tame, and in the face of people openly slain. Hey, and the other holy decrees again, which unto Moses only were sent, in tables of stone only to remain under an high and straight commandment, which at this time we think convenient thereupon to hold deceptions here by politic science of clergy clear. Wherefore all people now draw near, and in this place give your attendance, how ye should live, here you may you learn according to your allegiance, for it is well known unto this presence that doctors we are and of high degree and have laws and custody. 
lay forth your reasons. Now let me see how law of legions ought to be laid, which of the Hebrews subscribed be, with other of Moses that now is head. To content therein, herein I would be glad among the people here manifestly, and the truth expound to them openly. Enter Jesus. Lords, much low with you be lent, and peace be among this company. Son, I way, uh, son, away I would thou went for other haste and hand. Child, whosoever thee hither sent, they were not wise, thus warn I thee, for we have other tales to tent than with children boarding to be. Good son, thou art too young to learn the high mystery of Moses' law. Thy reason cannot it discern, for thy wit it is not worth a straw. And for no marvel, though thou shouldst be raw in such high points for to be reasoning, for age of age that art thou were a mere mis uh, a very youngling. Eh? Sirs, whatsoever to me you say, me needeth not of you to learn nothing. This busy boy of his tongue, all secrets, surely he thinketh he knows. Nay, hey, certain son, thou art too young by clergy clear to know our law. Ye doctors all, that be present, suffice and muse no more of me, for of your laws the whole intent, nothing thereof is hide from me. For in those places that have I be, where all our laws first were wrought. Come, sit here and we shall see. For certain son, so seems it not. Then the doctors set Christ among them. Uh. Now it were, were it not a wondrous thing that our, ch this child our reasons that he should reach? And yet he saith he hath feeling our laws truly for to teach. Sirs, the Holy Ghost in me have light, that my power is to preach, and mo of the Godhead most of might most perfectly here may I teach. Whence came this child, I marvel sore, that speaketh to us this mystically? Sirs, I was all you before, and after you again shall be. Sirs, is this not a wondrous thing, and also a much more marvel? How be it surely in his work, and the acts thereof may follow right well? For as David in his psalm doth tell, Be children young, saying of them, Exore infantium et lactantium perfectisti laudem. Of ch childers' mouths ye know right well. God hath performed loving, but of one of such one heard I never tell, he being but so young a thing. Yet, son, somewhat thou shouldst have let in this place here to speak so large, where noble doctors together are met. Their child's, their child's words are at no charge. For sure, if thou wouldst never so fain, labor thy wits to learn our law. Yet art thou neither of might nor main to perceive that as a doctor may know. My words in no wise will I refrain, the truth thereby for to debar. I will then prove of plat and plain by your own laws, and never are. Masters all, what may this mean? I wonder saw how this can be. So young a child have I not seen with clerks to talk so cunningly. As wide in world as ever I went, saw I never none such before, but I draw amongst us he be sent to be the saviour of our sword. Uh, Sirs, I will prove by actions evident more mysteries than ever you read or saw. Say, son, which was the first commandment that was subscribed in Moses' law? Sith, all you masters together be set, and your books are here laid on braid, lay fertile your reasons, and do not let her write that he can read. I read this in the first bidding, which Moses did read us until. First honour God above all thing, with all thy heart and all thy will, and as thyself love thy neighbour, and in no wise to do him ill. Ye need no other books to bring but these two points for to follow, in whom the whole effect doth hinge of all our laws, both old and new. If he be these two, son, hath he show? Tell me the other, child, I thee pray. 
the third biddeth thee in any way that of thy labour thou shouldst rest, and truly keep thy Sabbath day, thyself thy servant, and thy best. The fourth biddeth thee do thy best, thy honour, sorry, thy father and mother for to honour, and when their goods are decreased with all thy might thou shouldst them succour. The fifth commandeth for any rigour, man nor woman, that thou shouldst kill. To flee adultery is another, and all that touches any ill. The seventh says, Thou shouldst not steal thy neighbour's goods more nor less. The eighth forbiddeth thee to counsel or to bear any false witness. The ninth forbiddeth oaths great in any wise thou shouldst not swear. The last thou would thou shouldst not covet thy neighbour's goods him to appear. And this Moses among us here hath declared among all men after scripture that we should lear how to keep his commandments ten. Behold our laws how he doth expound that he ne that never learned on book to read. Then all we he is much more profound in all truths if we take heed. Brother, let him go his ways, for if this abroad were known perfectly, the people would give him more press than we doctors for all our clergy. Friends both, sith, sith it is so, he knows no father of our lore, but as he comes, so let him go, for us he shall meddle no more. There cometh Joseph and Mary seeking the child, and Mary saith, Oh, dear Joseph, what is your red? Of my great dollar no boat may be. My heart is heavy as any lead. My child again till I may see. We have him sought in many a stead, up and down these days three. And whither that he be quick or dead, I do not know. That woe is me. In sorrow was there never man more. But mourning may it not amend. Mary, wife, let us therefore take the grace that God will send. If children's company he have caught, about yonder temple he is full right. Ay, Joseph, I see that I have sought. In this world was never such a sight. See, husband, where he sitteth aloft among yonder masters so much of might. Now blessed be him that hither us brought, for now in heart I am full light. Joseph, you know the order well. Go you and fetch your child and mine. Now I see him out of all peril, whom he shall with us again. I, Mary, wife, ye know right well, as I have told you many a time, sith men of might durst I never mell. Lo, dame, how they sit in their furs so fine. To them your errand for to say. Therein, Joseph, there is no peril. They have regarded you alway, because of age. This what I well. Uh, to them, wife, what should I say? If faith I do not know full well. Surely I shall be shamed today, for I can neither croak nor knell. Then go we thither both too, to them that sit so worthy in we. If you will not the errand do, no remedy. But I must need. Hey, dame, go tell them thy tale first, for like thou art to do that deed. I would tell mine, and I durst, I, I come behind also, God me speed. Ay, Jesus, Jesus, my son so sweet, thy going from me so suddenly hath caused us both for to weep with bitter tears abundantly. Thine old father here, and I, for thy sake, son, hath liked full ill. Our eyes, they were but seldom dry, but now that we are come thee till. Mother, why did you seek me so? It hath been oft said unto you, my father's will I must fulfil in every point for well or woe. Son, these tales that you me tell, as yet I cannot understand. But in my heart, this know I well, is very glad I have thee found. Now truly, dame, no marvel is, that, although thou in heart were full woe, well, to lose a ch such a child as this. How long, wife, hath he been there, f been thee fro? Sir, it is now these days three. Sith that he departed first from me, I am full glad hear him to see, alive without woe. 
No, farewell, masters of might and main, for with my mother now must I need for to recomfort her again, which so long for me hath lived in dread. Now that Lord of Lords be thy speed, wherever thou go in any quest, but if thou wilt tarry, thou shalt not need any more to put thy friends to cost. How sayest thou, father, for thy good will? Wilt thou grant thy help there till a way that he do not go? Uh, no, sir, in good faith that I nil, nor never forgo him by my will, neither for friend or foe. A long while we have him missed, and gone he was or that I wist. But had I him once by the fist, he, w he shall no more do so. Now, lordings, of your courtesy, do you not will my child from me? For with my will it shall not be, while that hour lives last. Then it is no boat for to entreat, thy child I see I cannot get. I trow it will be but waste to speak, that time I think is past. Now, lordings all, with your license, good time it is that we were hence. I thank you of your high sapience, that I with you we have had. Now, son, whenever thou comes this way, be bold of us, I the pray. If thou to age live may, thy friends may be full glad. Now farewell, lords of high decree. I take my leave at you all three. That lord that is in Trinity, he keep you all from care. And for the finding of this our son, in heaven's bliss that ye may wone and give you well to fare. Now come on, Mary with merry cheer, and bring your child with you here. At Nazareth now I would we were. Sir, in good time we shall come there. The way and weather and all is fair, whereof am I right fain? In this place, while we are here, look that we have all our gear, that we come not again. Joseph, husband, we miss nothing. But at your will, let us be going as fast as ever we can. And now, at all this company, my leave I take, and that full humbly, unto that Lord most mighty. Now I betake you every man. Now farewell, my friends all, for I must go, whatever befall. Needs must that needs shall, by me here may you know. Uh, that all you may use that ways, at all times your wives to please. Then shall you avoid much disease. God grant that you may do so. Exeunt Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. Now, ye lords that hath the laws to lead, mark well the words that hath been said by yonder child of wisdom great, which at this time among us here hath declared our laws by clergy clear, which by his acts doth appear that a god he is elect. Now surely it can no other be, for he is not living that ever see such by knowledge of excellence in so tender youth. For in our most highest disputations, to them he gave true solations, and also made expositions according to the truth. Is, is not this a wondrous case that this young child that such knowledge has? Now surely he hath a special grace, so by doubts discerning that which we noble doctors be, and graduates great of old antiquity, and now on this place with young infancy again are set to learning. Now brother, now brother both by my counsel, these mighty matters you set on side, and in avoiding of more peril that hereupon might betide, Therefore, let us no longer abide in these causes for it to contend, for this day is almost at an end. Now, brother both, sith it is so, as very nature doth me compel, here my troth I plight you too, in heart for ever with you to dwell. Now, masters all, by one assent, all our matters we join it be, till that day of argument may be appointed indifferently. Where are you the commonality you may depart on this condition, yet that attend that ye attend on the next mission? Now, friends, touching our festival day, is there aught else that I may say? No more now, but even away, for the night draws fast upon. And of your company I would you pray, and here I take my leave at every point. This matter being newly translate by Robert Crow in the year of our Lord God 1534, there them being, them being Mayor, Master Palmer, better, 
And uh, Richard Smythe and Pixley, Masters of the Weavers, this book ended the second day of March in the year above said. And bravo to all. This text is not easy, and I appreciate having your, your minds and your voices in the room on it. Um, so, so the three doctors, what, what do we make of them? Uh, Lisa, what do you, what do you make of the, of the doctors? Um, again, I'm interested in this idea that Mary and Joseph having to let, let Jesus sort of grow up as you will and start to become the prophet. And I'm, I'm interested in the fact that they never really say he's the son of God, but they're all just impressed by this child. Um, but yeah, I can imagine it was quite uh, a surprise for them, for this, you know, 12 year old to be like, no, no, <laughs> I'm your equal intellectually, just watch. So it was, that was a fun scene to play it. And then it's interesting to play them as they are convinced, you know, it's not just right away. Yes, it's quite refreshing, I think, uh, in a lot of morality plays, uh, doctors of the law are sort of evil hypocrites who want to twist the law to their own ends. And, and it's kind of nice that these actually are people who enjoy discussion and learning, and they don't shun learning that's even. Way learn it, you know, actually have learned something instead of just having to be like punished or, yeah, it's, you know, I like it. Yeah, I like it too. Well, no. Although the second doctor does kind of say, "Oh come on, let's you know he's gonna he's gonna take all our take all our audience away if we uh, carry on." With him, so. It's it's true. There's this journey. They're not particularly glad to see him that when yeah. this this twelve year old just wanders into their into their room. <laughs> um, I was thinking a bunch of high school nerds. <laughs> sort of with the precocious one walking in. <laughs> yeah. I I was thinking of, you know, professors with long beards or something. <laughs> um, Eric, how do you how do you see the doctors? Yeah, I think that's an accurate one. Or just like sort of, you know, old well not old men, but like people who have spent time, you know, discussing philosophy for ages and then this kid walks in and it's like uh, yeah, okay. I I know what you you know all, all the things that you know. It's just like maybe not from the books that you've read them from, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of yeah. it's either that or you know D and D nerds, and then this guy who likes uh, or you know like Star Wars nerds, and then the guy who likes Star Wars, Star Trek walks in, and then <laughs> it sounds like the start of a really bad joke. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it was interesting how the rhyming changed. I didn't notice it at first, but then it's like you know, it's there. It changed from like line line a a b b to like a b a b, and then like a a c, and like it just changed like abruptly without me really noticing because it, it flowed so well. Well done, Eric. Because I was so desperately trying to read the script, I wasn't bothered about rhyming in this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, in this play, we have seen we have seen it switch back and forth between different rhyme schemes. But in general, A B A B is a more formal and and more demanding rhyme scheme than couplets. Uh, so you know, with couplets, you can you can do comedy, you can do sort of Ogden Nash extended lines with lots of syllables in them. Um, but A B A B is a lot more formal, and the meter got more regular too. Except for the doctors, I think they had like, you know, the, like four line rhyme where it was like uh, the first line and the fourth line rhymed and then you had the the fifth line and the eighth line or something, something like that. And it was like, okay, that I did not expect that to happen. Yeah, it was, it was it was nicely structured. See if you can find us an, can you find us an example to, to read out? Uh, and, uh, and while you look for one, um, while you look for one, um, Greg, how did you find it being Jesus in his, in the conversation with the doctors? It was a nice difference from Simeon. Um, I, it was a it was a very nice, actually interesting doubling. I thought to let go from the old man who was waiting for the end to well, the young man who was just starting. I did I. The more I did it, the more the voice just fitted in because he just sounds like the most precocious small child. <laughs> and um, I love, I love his innocence, and I love, and I, I know it's 
this is technically Joseph and Mary, but I love their discussion when they find him. <laughs> it was just like every parent's nightmare. Where have we put the child? <laughs> Who's got him? I thought Home Alone, you know, they, they, they're half, halfway out of out of the city and they suddenly go, oh, something <laughs> <missing."> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and Mary is is kind of freaking out about this. And Joseph is like, he's just wandered off somewhere. He'll be back. <laughs> um, and it's like, Joseph being like, I guess we have to go back to the city again. <laughs> <laughs> and can you make sure you've got everything, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a nice touch. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've got visions of, you know, you could really play that to the hilt and sort of, if we were doing this in a, um, in the round or something or promenade, you could really just play with that and keep finding things and then be like, yeah, <laughs> we've got everything fine. And I... <laughs> now, Eric, have you found us an example of that rhyme scheme you were talking about? Well I don't know, because, like, they're, they're, like, I thought I had, but then I was like, okay, this is not the rhyme scheme I had in mind. But then, like, for example, towards the end, the, the first Doctor goes, now you lords have lost the lead. And then the next line is said, and ends in great, here, clear, and then appear, and elect. And I'm not sure whether elect is supposed to rhyme with anything. But then the second Doctor continues with, uh, like, really weird shifting rhyme, where you've got... It can no other be, um, for he is not living that can never see. And then excellence and rhymes with nothing, because obviously, you know, it's a long word. Um, but then disputations rhymes with solations and expositions and truth rhymes with youth. So, yeah, it's like the, it's shifting rhyme so, so weirdly in that, that last bit. And then the third doctor in that next speech, case has grace discerning B, antiquity, infancy, learning. So it's, you know, that's a, that's a five line rhyme with A and A and then three lines in the middle, B, B, B. Yeah. So okay. it, is, it is kind of weird. I hadn't noticed that at all because I was too busy kind of trying to, you know, just read it. Um, I hadn't really noticed that at all. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a clever, it's a clever bit of writing that, you get these these tri triolets, not uh, you know, uh, triolets and then a tail line and then another triolet and then an and then a tail line rhyming with the first. So it's a yeah, it's a bit like the kind of tail rhyme they used to write romances in, um, but uh, used here for a different purpose. And then the yes, first doc after that goes back into A B A B. Sorry, Eric, I, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, unless they're having a threesome or something, but that's kind of weird. I mean, their doctor is not... I, I mean, you know, it's three guys in a room, and then this kid walks in. Yeah, I don't know. Second yeah. doctor does say oh, about lighting, <laughs> lighting the troth to stay with you evermore. I mean, that that sounded to me quite, you know... Well, they, they, do, they, they do bid each other an affectionate farewell, and I quite... I like in this play, like the relationships between all the various groups of people seem quite nice. The two, the two prophets uh, are, are sort of polite to each other. They're not arguing with each other. And then Simeon and Anna have this sort of very quiet mutual respect going. Joseph and Mary have that lovely relationship that we talked about. Uh, and, um, and yeah, these doctors are much less aggressively disputatious than other doctors we we have we have known and they do they they do you know um being in the presence of jesus seems to have you know just filled them with affection and, and holiness um so in that way this play is kind of nice in 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 ways that sometimes mystery plays are not you know it's it's got this niceness to it um which is quite wholesome i think yeah, I kind of like it. It's about the mysteries, but there are no like evil sinners and no tires. You know, it's just like a nice Christmas play where people are still learning, right? I don't know. Yeah, and because the, the words of the Ten Commandments are put into the mouth of a 12-year-old boy, it, it, it's, it's, there's no kind of John Bale yeah. you know, sort of preaching. 
it's 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 very it has a beautiful simplicity to it. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I quite like it too. So I think we may have reached the stage of asking for final thoughts from around the room, and I believe the finger of fate first lands on Eric. Um, yeah, no, it's it's fun. I just like the. I mean, I think the best part would be to do just like the Joseph and Mary exchanges, just just for fun, because um, you know they sort of are fun to watch and listen to. Uh, I mean, having the whole Christmas uh, sort of theme as a framing device would be useful, but it's just sort of nice to have that as well. Um, I guess also you could use, I'm trying to think how you would stage this, but I mean, I guess there's pageants have a specific way of being staged rather than sort of other plays where you can just, I don't know, historic plays or like sort of, um, you know, tragedies or whatever, where you can kind of play with the form a bit. I don't know. I, I don't know if they have a specific um, like staging devices and that kind of thing. But yeah, I, I, I liked it. It was fun. Yeah, we do get some pretty specific stage directions, uh, like when when Mary and Joseph leave the temple the first time, they say, there they go down into the four pageant, uh, I guess that's the street in front of the wagon, uh, and, and that Jesus stealeth away. And, you know, last time with the Shearmen and Taylors, we had stage directions like that marvelous one for Herod, he rageth in the pageant and in the street. Um, <laughs> And we do have, we still do have that relationship with the audience, Joseph appealing to the married men, and then later the doctors giving the audience leave to depart, as long as they come back next time we do this. Um, so, yeah, it would be interesting to think of, if you weren't confined to a pageant wagon, but if you were trying to do, you know, some kind of outdoor or street drama, you know, how would you, how would you do it? How, how would you stage it? Um, and Lisa, what what if those thoughts or any thoughts would be welcome? Uh, I just like that this was a kinder or gentler pageant. Usually, when you think of these medieval pageants, it's always like the the black and white, good and wrong. And I like that the doctors learn something and um, an interesting view of like Jesus as a child, because we don't know so much about the at least the historical Jesus that like what his life was. Kind of pull that in for yourself. Um, it does. It does lend itself to some interesting staging, which is more. Th th yeah, there are more stage directions we're used to seeing, so that's a lot to kind of play with than normally just a big space and very few props and you know what we usually do for early modern stuff. So this is a yeah, this is a really interesting one. I see this at Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it does, it, it certainly follows on from the earlier play, which is the Christmas story. And uh, I don't know, there's a date at the end of the text that says March, but maybe that's just when it was written or just when it was published. Yeah. Um, I, I, I agree with you. This is a very Christmassy thing. I mean, we start with the prophets admiring the star. So yeah. that's very Christmassy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it being it being a pageant sponsored by a guild, you're right. Maybe it would have more more props and more special effects than your average um, that than than we think of other early modern plays having, because the the guild would want to sponsor something nicer than all the other guilds. Um, well, you guys, right? <laughs> yeah. So, Greg, final thoughts. Yeah, once I got past the language, great fun. I, it's it's a lovely version of that bit of the, or probably about two lines of the Bible. Um, I, I, I think because there's that everyman element of people recognizing themselves in people. So Joseph and Mary are very instantly recognizing them as being the, the husband and wife with some lovely detail in it. I do like that. I like the theme of, of recognition and that people recognize Jesus when he comes into their lives. They, they recognize, they, they somehow, he, coming into contact with Jesus somehow changes them, changes Simeon, changes Anna. The, the poor prophets never get to actually meet him. They just get to tell people. Um, 
but but you know there there is it's not like a big huge dramatic change it's just this this recognition that there's something new and the prophets would probably recognize him right away so that's kind of the sad part it's like oh too bad they didn't get <laughs> It's true. It's true. They'd be more likely to spot him than most, I think, being right. prophets. Right. They, they, they wouldn't be like, who is this kid? They would know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we so were expecting you on the Jews day. <laughs> so, so, it, Lisa, if we went with your staging, if, if, if the prop for the baby Jesus was a little more abstract than we're used to seeing, maybe yeah. it would... Maybe if you staged it, we could have the prophets preparing that somehow. Yeah, yeah. That would be that would be something, and you'd see how many people. And there'd be a couple people in the lobby afterward being like, "Did you see?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 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 Lindsay, final thoughts. Well, just sort of following on from what everyone has said, yes, I think this there's a could potentially be a lot of fun to be had with this one, and I think <laughs> there's potential for kind of like a a really a really enjoyable kind of comic set piece when Joseph is trying to catch the purple. <laughs> um, I was I was imagining that um, the the prophets are on the side with kind of fishing poles with birds. <laughs> They would sort of be holding it, and then just as Joseph was about to reach it, sort of whack it away and he'd kind of fall and do, do some sort of kind of comedy call. And that a lot of fun could be had with that. And then the the angels would come on and kind of go, right? give, me the rod, "Give me the rod, <laughs> all fine," you know. That kind of thing, which I think, I mean, there's, I mean, that's just one idea. There's so many ideas that, that you could have a lot of fun with it. And I think it would be, you know, at the point it comes in the text, it would be, um, you know, a really good, a really, really good kind of central set piece, I think. Um, and yeah, I just, I think it's, um, I think it's, it's, it's kind of lovely. And the, the, the density of the language and the difficulty in some of the language, I think could be, quite easily overcome with, you know, things like rehearsal and a, and a few kind of more modern pronunciations and that kind of thing, it would be, it would become a lot clearer. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. It would make a good kind of companion piece to something else, you know. In rep with something that was maybe a little darker, that's kind of the lighter version of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, you could, uh, the the first in the series, the Shearman and Taylor's pageant is, is much shorter than this one. And you could, you could run them together. It would be a sort of matinee and then evening, maybe, or, or evening play, but with a dinner break. Yeah. Loaves and fishes for everyone. <laughs> well, also, it's kind of, it's, it's got humor, but it's not that thing of, you know, like yesterday, where we had the sort of, um, well, I mean, you know, it will probably be on the podcast knowing Rob, uh, but um, it doesn't have the humor of like, oh, a deaf woman, um, you know, trying to cheer on her child and stuff that we did yesterday in the Christmas mask uh, with uh, Father Christmas. And um, which was quite funny because uh, of the way Sarah did it. But I think um, it doesn't have that sort of dodgy ableist humor. It's got just like sort of just yeah possibly slapstick possibly physical comedy it's just funny yeah i mean joseph does complain of various aches and pains and he can't walk to jerusalem as fast as mary wants him to but uh but yeah i mean this this particular version of this play is dated 1534 and the Christmas pageant we did yesterday, which will be available on our YouTube channel, Ben Johnson, Christmas His Mask, uh, well well worth a look. It's short and the stage directions are hilarious. Um, yeah, that's from 1616, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit, it's, it's, it's much later. So, um, and it's also Ben Johnson who has vinegar for blood. This, um, uh, and this playwright does seem to be a lot, a lot nicer. He has perhaps ale for blood instead. <laughs> instead, <laughs> it's, that it's sort of more family friendly in a way. It's designed for a different kind of audience. Yeah. 
Yes, the sort of thing that's designed to make King James laugh is a, a little bit, you know, different style of humor than, than pitched at your average dude on the street in Coventry. Um, and yeah, this one is, it, it could be a family drama. After all, you know, the star, the, one of the stars is a child. So, uh, you know, if only, if only all kids were so well behaved and if they got lost for three days, you'd find them in the temple disputing with professors. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah. And well, it looks like it's probably about time to wrap this up. So I will uh, I will thank our team of readers from the bottom of my heart, uh, however far down that is, answers on a postcard. Um, thank you so much and good night unto ye all. <laughs>